one million dollars. Good luck in play on America. Tomorrow will be a hot and humid day. Could be our first 90 degree day of the year. Sunny and dry for now, but then a Viper 6 alert day goes in effect for Thursday. We do have the potential of severe weather. All those details coming up. Right now on News Channel 6 at 11, voters are getting the chance to question those running for office in Columbia County. We'll have a look at the candidate forum. Also ahead, Governor Kemp has approved the Georgia state budget, but the Peach State is prioritizing for the upcoming year. And a new playing field is coming to a local high school. How the new turf could help the athletes as your news at 11 starts now. Live from Television Park, this is WJDF News Channel 6 at 11. Here, thank you so much for joining us. Coverage you can count on begins as Aiken Mayor Teddy Milner is facing a SLED investigation. According to SLED, the agency was requested to investigate Mayor Milner for claims of exploitation of a vulnerable adult. The request was made by the Aiken Department of Public Safety on February 29th. Milner's lawyer commented that she denies any wrongdoing and that the mayor is cooperating with SLED throughout this investigation. And new tonight, one man was found dead with a gunshot wound to the head on Jeffcoat Road in Wagner. According to a witness, the gunman, a black male, ran from the house before deputies arrived on the scene. The alleged gunman is considered armed and dangerous. If you have any information on the suspect, contact the Aiken County Sheriff's Office. An investigation into a shooting at the Augusta Mall has led to a major drug bust. Jerry Jackson and Victoria Griffin were arrested on drug charges. Investigators were executing a search warrant in the investigation at Webster Drive. That led to the seizure of a large amount of drugs, including fentanyl, cocaine, and marijuana. And it's time now for our first check of the forecast. Here's meteorologist Jenna Petracci. Jenna, we've had some pretty crazy weather this week. Yeah, that's right. We've had storms already. We had some hail. We had wind damage. And now we have the heat. It's going to be a hot one tomorrow for sure. In the meantime, pretty inactive tonight. It's clear. It's dry. You're taking a look at our Terry Limber Hyundai Skyview cam over at Doctors Hospital. So no rain today. We have a high of 89 degrees. That puts us 5 degrees above our average. Low this morning, well above average. We are in the 60s with the lows this week. And right now, we're all still in those 70s. 70 exactly in Augusta, 73 in Allendale, 70 in McCormick, 74 in Louisville, Aiken, you're at 72 degrees, 75 in Wrightsville, and 74 in Edgefield. So a warm and muggy night with dew points also at 70 degrees in Waynesboro, Gibson, Sparta, Sandersville. So these are some very high summer-like dew points. And tomorrow, humidity will definitely be a big factor. Winds are coming in from the south, bringing in all that moisture and warm temperatures. Six miles per hour in Aiken, five in Edgefield. Pretty calm across the rest of the CSRA. Satellite radar showing a little bit of high level cloud cover passing by. Other than that, it's clear. And out to the northwest of us, we did have this little thunderstorm complex here from Alabama moving into northwest Georgia. Even some severe thunderstorm warnings issued there. Now that's starting to fall apart. And for the rest of our western viewing area, you can see it is is very dry. So for tomorrow morning, we'll have clear skies, temperatures in those mid to upper 60s, partly cloudy around 7, 8 o'clock, but overall a good amount of sunshine tomorrow afternoon as we heat up into the 90s. Now we are on the roller coaster of temperatures once again because those highs will fall into the 70s over the weekend and the lows will go into the 50s. But before that comes, we have some chances of rain. So a Viper 6 alert day is actually in effect for Thursday as not only will we have rain, but we could also see some strong to severe storms with hail and damaging wind gusts. I'll have all the details on that coming up, so stay with us. But back to you, Hannah. All right, Jenna, looking forward to it. Coverage you can count on continues in Columbia County, where voters are getting the chance to hear from candidates in the upcoming primary elections. Nikita Dennis was there. People in Columbia County are bringing their questions for candidates vying for positions in the primary election. Well, I would want to know... Um... Uh, personal stances on uh, tax increases, tax decreases. The Columbia County Chamber of Commerce Political Action Committee hosted a political forum Tuesday with candidates running for Columbia County Board of Commissioners District 2 and 3, Board of Education District 4, and Georgia State House of Representatives District 131. 
Each of them have the opportunity to answer questions of focusing on issues in the area, including taxes, education, and more jobs. Uh, because I think I've got the best, qual most qualifications. I'm prepared to do the job day one. Uh, I have a skill set that it takes to be a county commissioner. Letting them know that they have a candidate that will work for them. Because that's what I'm here for, to work for them, to listen to their voice and listen to their concerns. The forum helped at least one voter narrow his choice in this month's election. I, I've eliminated a candidate or two. Uh, I've, I've, I'm leaning in a certain direction, especially for the state house seats. Um, and um, I'm pretty confident who I'll vote for for Board of Education as well. In Columbia County, Nikita Dennis, WJBF, News Channel 6. Today, Georgia Governor Brian Kemp officially signed the fiscal year 2025 budget. And with a new budget comes a $2,500 pay raise for teachers and $3,000 for law enforcement to increase retention in the state. $7 million is being added to the Georgia Literacy Initiative. Every public school in Georgia will also get a $45,000 school safety grant to keep students and teachers safe. Here in Georgia. We will continue to balance the budget and put our money where it will have the greatest impact while working together to ensure that we are good stewards of the people's money because we know that that is your money, not the government's. More than $1 million for 35 new troopers and more than $16 million to create behavioral health crisis centers across Georgia is also included. And speaking of budgets, the president and CEO of the Georgia Chamber of Commerce is sharing how to sculpt the future of the state's economy. Chris Clark stopped in Columbus Monday as part of the chamber's statewide tour. Several topics discussed include the future of the workforce and the importance of infrastructure through roads, rails, and ports. The economy tour is scheduled soon. And the IRS is issuing its final warning to Americans to collect the remaining $1 billion left in unclaimed federal tax refunds. The tax collection, collection agency says that 1 million people across the nation face a May 17th deadline to get their unclaimed refunds for the 2020 tax year. In total, the unclaimed refunds are worth more than $1 billion. And some big renovations are now complete at a local high school football stadium. Here's Graham Lee with the details. For us, having this field uh, compared to what was here before, it is a big deal. Nearly two years ago, school leaders met with Sports Turf Company to discuss improving parts of Warrior Stadium, renovations that officials say were much needed. It was a really old facility. They did not have, um, honestly, much of their events were, were not regulation. Um, or were, were not positioned well so that they would be able to host a meet or something to that level. E even being able to practice effectively was, was hindered. They stepped in to make the improvements as part of a $2 million project. The renovations include a new eight-lane running track, shot put pad, a runway for long and triple jump, and a discus cage. I think since I've been here, I know probably 10 years prior, they've never hosted a track meet here. And that's going to be a big deal when that finally happens. The field also features the latest organic infills that are sustainably grown and harvested in Georgia. Wiggins says he hopes these upgrades will benefit athletes in an area that doesn't get much attention. I'm from Swainsboro myself, so Jefferson County is relatively close to, to my heart. I love to do projects in, in those parts of the state that I feel like tend to be underserved. Um, it's a I, I love the fact that the county invested the way they did in their student athletes uh, and in their school because it's a point of pride to have that facility there. School district leaders say the next project for the school is building a new field house at Warrior Stadium. They are hoping to break ground next month. And a popular social media app and its parent company in China are suing the U.S. government. TikTok and ByteDance are taking legal action against a law that would ban the platform unless it's sold to another company. They're arguing the law is unconstitutional. President Biden signed the measure as part of a foreign aid package. There's concern China could force ByteDance to turn over user data or sway public opinion. Coming up, the Columbia County Spring Fair raised money for a good cause. How they will be helping the community with coverage you can count.
The money will be used to expand the hospital PQ unit from 14 to 22 beds. Coming up, new information in the death of a South Carolina woman. What new evidence investigators discovered when coverage you can count on continues. But first, the winning numbers for tonight's South Carolina lottery are pick three, three, two, two, and the pick four winning numbers, nine, zero, one, one, fireball nine. They say you can't get bow tie. Something about the morning. They should be the food now. You know that I love you. Good morning, my gosh. These days, breakfast is space for sandwiches for only $4.99 for a limited time. The Live 5 for 6 Skyview Network, sponsored by Terry Lambert Hyundai. The Live 5 for 6 Mobile app. Download it today. South Carolina woman whose body was found in North Carolina. Gracie Fusco has the story. What you see now is Miller's family leaving the sheriff's office today. They did not want to speak on camera, but on their way out, one of them said this. A few hours later, the Robinson County Sheriff's Office brought News 13 in and shared the exact moments leading up to Micah's death. The morning of Saturday, April 27th, she left her apartment at 1138 dressed for work. She then drove to Dick's Pawn Shop in Myrtle Beach, where surveillance footage you see here shows her enter the building and buy a firearm and ammo where she got instant approval. After she left the pawn shop, she started driving and searched National Park near me on her phone. Miller then made a call to 911 at 2.54 p.m. She asked if her phone could be located and then told the dispatcher why she was calling. Tell me what's um, happened. Um, I'm about to kill myself, and I just want my family to know where to find me. Micah then hung up in the Robeson County Sheriff's Office, was dispatched at 3.03 p.m. to the Lumber River State Park to locate Micah and conduct a well-being check. Between 3.20 and 3.50 p.m., the deputies arrived at the park, requested a phone ping, and sent out drones to locate Micah. During that time, a person said he heard crying while he was fishing and then a gunshot and found a bag with Micah's ID. At 4.23 p.m., another person called the sheriff's office and said he found a body in the water. Authorities said Micah's husband, John Paul Miller, traveled to Charleston, South Carolina on Friday, April 26th, and through eyewitness statements and license plate readers, it showed he did not get back to Myrtle Beach until Saturday, April 27th at 2.22 p.m. Authorities added he traveled to and from Charleston with other people. If you were on the fence about ordering McDonald's, kiss. Farmer's Forecast on WGBF News Channel 6 is sponsored by Metco. Service makes the difference. The Aquinas Fighting Irish Girls soccer team are now back-to-back -back state champions one year after claiming the program's first ever state title. The Irish beating Lake Oconee Academy 2-1 to one here at Five Star Stadium on the campus of Mercer University. The Irish say the second title even sweeter than the first. The Aquinas High School is <laughs> Amazing. This journey is... So special. I didn't think we we're going to be here again after the way the season started, but as I said before, don't judge us on how we start, judge us on how we finish. Uh, even better than the first because this group has worked so hard to get back where we start, where we came from last year. We had lost five seniors and then another player was hurt, so that we were down a lot of starters. We have five new starters this year, and everybody's picked it up so much so we can get to this place right now. You thought a sequel was, uh, was going to be better than the original? Yeah, and what did I say? That's what happened. The sequel was way better than the original. The ending was the same, but believe you and me, it was a trials and tribulations all the way up until today. But these girls overcame, and what can I say? We're state champs. Aquinas taking a 2-1 lead into the half on goals from L. Morris and freshman Mary Jane Knight. And the defense held tight the rest of the way. For the coaching staff and the players, a second straight title is a testament to all their hard work. It feels amazing. This year was a little bit
bit tougher than last year, but it's just I, these girls are just great. We really worked hard this whole playoffs, and it was just great. The second one sweeter than the first one? Yeah, definitely. Um, this was a lot younger of a group, so coming up and just working as a team and really growing together and being able to win state is, I think, better than the first time. It's so amazing. I mean, I'm, I just feel so honored to be a part of this team, to know how hard that we've worked and to know that we get to inspire a whole generation of younger girls to get to look up, up to us and see that they can do this, that with hard work, they can achieve anything, and I think we're, we're proof of that. It's different hurdles, so you have different hurdles, and everybody's bringing their A game, and it's not going to be the same fairy tale as before was 10 and 0, so you have different trials and tribulations to overcome, so these girls dug deep and they overcame it. You guys went like winless and now back-to-back -back champs. Are you guys building a dynasty here? We really are, and I just, I'm just i so proud to be part of this team, and I can't wait for the future of Aquinas Girls Soccer. With back-to-back -back titles in the books, the Irish will look to make it three in a row in 2025. Reporting from Macon, Georgia, Brendan Robertson, WJBF News Channel 6. Make dinner good tonight with Hardy's new... A unique marriage proposal going viral. A man popped the question while scuba diving with his girlfriend in Fiji. He purchased an unlimited dive package and worked with the crew to pick out a good spot to propose. This actually happened last year, but the bride-to-be shared it recently to mark the anniversary of the day she said yes. No word yet on when they'll officially tie the knot. Wow, okay, that's a unique one, but could you imagine him not being scared to lose that ring? Yeah, and I think I like the way you were proposed to better because oh. you can't like you can't say anything underwater. Yeah, you know? I was thinking that too. Like, did he even ask? I was by the water, yeah. not in the water. And that's so enough. I'll that's that. would be enough for me. Yeah. But man, I don't know how he held on to that ring. Me but either. It's cool. I like it. Mm -hmm. Well, we have a Viper Six Alert Day in effect Thursday and a hot and humid day tomorrow. Absolutely. Well, that's our report for now. Thank you for watching. And make sure to tune in tomorrow morning for GMA. Thank you for watching. event ever. At Tile Center, we'll work directly with you to help you select just the right products you'll need. Our staff has the expertise needed to assist homeowners, contractors, architects, and designers with any tile project anywhere in your home or office. At Tile Center, we bring your visions to life. Come see why for yourself at any of our locations at Tile Center or online at tilecenter.com. Your tile and stone experts. I'm scheduled.